The Venator class Star Destroyer makes its first theatrical appearance in Revenge of the Sith during the opening battle of Coruscant. Within the Star Wars setting, these ships are regarded as the most powerful capital ships of the Republic Navy during the Clone Wars, serving double duty as battleships and starfighter carriers. The Venator class Star Destroyer, also known as a Republic Attack Cruiser or Jedi Cruiser, was a line of wedge-shaped Star Destroyers in service with the Galactic Republic Navy during the Clone Wars. The backbone of the Galactic Republic's naval forces, the Venator was a versatile capital ship capable of serving as a troop carrier, a cargo transport, and a warship for ship-to-ship -ship combat. Often utilized as flagships by the Jedi Generals of the Grand Army of the Republic, the Venator class was closely associated with the Jedi Order as a result. Venators served in several major engagements of the Clone Wars. Ultimately, though, the Venator class was decommissioned and replaced by the Imperial class Star Destroyer, a larger warship that was modeled on its Republic predecessor. At the top of the Venator featured two bridges, with the starboard bridge serving as the primary command center of the ship and the port bridge being dedicated to starfighter operations. These bridges were raised from the main body of the destroyer and provided a wide, panoramic view of the battle. However, the bridge's exposed nature made them vulnerable to attack. On top of each tower was a hyperwave communications and scanner module. Its function was similar to the scanner globes on the Imperial class and other KDY vessels, but it had a flat shape. The Venator class's eight heavy dual turbo laser turrets were its main weapons and had two tracking modes. In its precise, long-range tracking mode, the DBY-827 could hit a target vessel at a range of 10 light minutes. During close-range fights, the turrets could rotate in three seconds with their fast tracking mode. In terms of firepower, these weapons rivaled the main battery on the later Imperial 1-class Star Destroyers. At the bottom of the ship is the ventral docking bay and a hangar command post. A crane was installed for securing a docked ship or moving freight. As we head toward the front of the ship, a powerful deflector shields and the tractor beam projector are used to protect the ship's interior. The long dorsal flight deck of the Venator class enables hundreds of starfighters to launch rapidly. However, slow opening and closing of the deck's armored bow doors can leave the vessel vulnerable. Toward the back of the Venator are four primary ion drive thrusters, two secondary thrusters and four tertiary thrusters, with five on either side of the hyperdrive mounting. A typical ship is about 1,137 meters in length, 548 meters in width, and about 268 meters in height, making it one of the largest capital ships capable of atmospheric operations, landing on planets to load and unload troops and vehicles. Let's take a closer look inside the Venator class Star Destroyer. A typical Republic Venator carried a complement of 420 fighters, 192 V-Wing or V-19 Torrent Starfighters, 192 ETA-2 Actis-class Interceptors, and at least 36 ARC-170 Starfighters. The ship also typically maintained a variety of shuttles in its hangars. As we take a closer look near the front of the vessel, we can find the tractor beam generator. Further down the ship are the fighter and vehicle hangars, local shield generator and atmosphere ducts. The hangars were areas for launching, landing, repairing, and refueling vehicles. Hangars which opened onto the vacuum of space were sealed by a magnetic shield and had emergency airlocks in case the shield failed. On the port side is the docking port and docking vestibule which are used for larger starship and a transfer of equipment and troops.
Its main reactor could annihilate up to 40,000 tons of hypermatter fuel per second. The main engine room had several vertical power cylinders littering the room, with walkways on different levels providing access to onboard personnel. In addition, a subsidiary reactor and power cells are used to power up the various weapons throughout the ship. Right next to the main reactor is the hyperdrive generator. The hyperdrive generator were high-performance engines and were used to make the jump into hyperspace. By the end of the Clone Wars, it had become the most popular capital ship of the Republic, although shortly after the formation of the New Order, it was eclipsed by designs inspired by the Victory class. Despite this, Venators were used to great effect in the early years of the Empire. Eventually, more robust vessels such as the Imperator and Tector class became favored, and the Venator and its variants were phased out. They could be used to land troops on planetary surfaces, and serve as escorts for larger battleships, but their primary role was as mainline cruisers and starfighter carriers. Despite possessing powerful weaponry and being on par with the Victory class, the Venator class was designed with an additional starfighter carrier role in mind. Its hangars were far larger than those on other Star Destroyers like the Victory class. I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look into the The Venator class Star Destroyer. If you have any suggestions or request, leave your comments below. Like and subscribe for more upcoming animations.